One franchise that I wish I could constantly make content on is the infamous JRPG behemoth Final Fantasy. While more recently I've covered Final Fantasy 1 and Final Fantasy Tactics, at one point or another on this channel existed my entire two month long Final Fantasy 7 series that I unfortunately had to take down. Which don't you all worry, it's coming back in a big way. Needless to say, Final Fantasy is a very important franchise to me and who I am as a gamer. Despite my countless efforts, I can't complete these bad boys back to back to back, but if I could, I would. So I was thinking to myself, why not gush about my favorites in one big video? Welcome to my top 10 Final Fantasy games. Now, I don't want to put a ton of rules on this, but I think the biggest thing I can say is that I will not be focusing on three things for this video. One, I'm not going to include sequels, prequels, or spin-off games. Things like the Final Fantasy Tactics series or Crisis Core Final Fantasy VII. Two, to go along with that, I will also not be including Final Fantasy XI or XIV. Essentially, no MMOs on this list. Don't get me wrong, I have played a lot of Final Fantasy XIV, and I love the community aspect of the franchise. And for me, it may be my favorite MMO of all time, but I want to focus on those particular regular numeric entries for the consoles. Before we start today's top 10, I want to be very clear about something. I've been averaging a top 10 a month for a little while now, and the more fun, the more interesting, the more weird I get with these, the more pissed off a lot of you guys are in the comments or on social media. So I just want to reiterate this. These top 10s are not meant to clickbait or to make you angry. They're literally my goddamn top 10s. It's just think pieces or opinions for me. And if you respect me a lot, then that's awesome. But if you don't respect me, then none of my videos or thoughts should ever bother you. These videos are meant to be fun. They're meant to be lighthearted. They're meant to be enjoyed. They start a discussion. They're not meant to ruin your day. So now that I got this icky vibe out of the way, let's talk about my top 10 favorite Final Fantasy games. Number 10. You know, come to think of it, Final Fantasy as a franchise tends to have some of the most divisive fan bases. Everyone's got their favorites, and then there's this thing of battling other people based on their opinions. And I guess I might as well come out swinging to get all of your guys' attentions. And I just did that big speech about not pissing you guys off. Ugh, nice one, you hypocrite. One of the big head turners that I always run into with people is either they like or hate Final Fantasy VIII. While graphically not too shabby, the junction system was decent at best. Triple Triad the card game did debut here, but I feel like it made bigger waves with the Tetra Master system in Final Fantasy IX. I could kind of care less about Squall or Leon or whatever the hell his name is. And Cypher, Zypher, Sefer, is a friend slash villain who I've consistently been disappointed in over the years. To me, Final Fantasy VIII had its big brother Seven to show him how to be cool, with Squall having a gun blade, a cool scar, and is a part of something akin to Cloud Soldier Group with C. Which, don't get me wrong, I'm all about. Yet, I recall not really understanding the overall story correctly. But to my understanding, its narrative and character development shine a lot more in the Japanese version. I will say, putting it so low on my list makes me want to deep dive hard into this game again. Really figure out why it's so weird. Number 9 All right, calm down, calm down, calm down. Yes, it's on this list, calm down. Jesus. Now, I've already made a big, large, defendant video about Final Fantasy 13, and it's one that I thought, honestly, people were going to hate me a lot more about, but it's never too late with this video. Either way, having an opinion on something hurts a lot of people, even if it's over a video game. Now, the reason why Final Fantasy 13 is on this list is because of all the reasons I like it for. I love the combat system with its unique automated system. It feels like real-time battle chess. You're always looking at the overall scope of what's happening in front of you. The battle theme is super captivating and makes me want to fight everyone I run into. 
graphically with its sweeping set pieces to its fun looking characters. There is a lot of awesome things in this game that stand out for me. However, even if I do like this game a lot, there is a bunch that really rubs me the wrong way. The character development is one of the worst in the franchise. The dialogue and character motivations are really weird and bad. There's a ton of terminology in the game that is very hard to explain to its user base. And yes, admittedly in its first opening hours, the game is relatively a little bit too linear than the usual explorative pieces that the Final Fantasy franchise is known for. But then again, think about it. This was the first Final Fantasy in years, and they were trying to aggressively go for something different. And I applaud them for it. For all of its faults, Final Fantasy XIII may be one of the most divisive games in the franchise's history. Number eight. Final Fantasy XII is an ensemble piece that kind of ends up being Star Wars in a way. And you know, I kind of dig that. While I don't find myself identifying with a whole lot of the characters in this game, 12 deals with a lot of political topics almost across the board. Kind of similarly to Final Fantasy XIII at times, I feel like it starts to introduce characters or terms that aren't really that important. But the atmospheres and locales in this game are very distinct. I think the reason why Final Fantasy XII ranks lower on this list for me is because I wasn't necessarily a fan of the overall plot, art style, the characters, and how they converge to make this final product. What I will say that hooked me, similarly to that of XIII, was its gameplay. The combat was very fun, and it felt very different than your traditional Final Fantasies. I feel like a lot of the Final Fantasies from X onward till today tried to evolve a lot as a genre and as a franchise. And 12, when it was released, was one of the big ones that did shake up the formula quite a bit. And yo, that monster hunting aspect though, whoo! I may be one of the few people out there that loved fighting that secret 50 million HP boss. Seriously, what a treat of a fight. So difficult, but somehow so rewarding. Number seven. I'm gonna be honest, I never got around to the original Final Fantasies when I was a kid. Mostly because in the States, there was a big mix up about numbers. Final Fantasy 1 was the same in Japan and in the States, but the numbers got crazy real quick. Final Fantasy 2 here was actually 4, we never got 5, and 6 was 3 for us. Yeah, it's awful. It wasn't until I was 18 when I finally got a DS and was gifted Final Fantasy 3 for the DS, where I experienced the original game with DS upgrades, and I gotta say, I was hooked. This game, like some of the others, Out the Gate gives you all the tools and talent you need from the beginning. Kind of following the flow of previous entries, we've got light and dark, we've got jobs, we've got monsters. The biggest appeal for me when I played the DS version wasn't just the graphical update or the way they handled the gameplay. There was a point in my life where I had to sell my entire DS collection, which was pretty robust at the time. And the only game I kept out of that group was Final Fantasy 3 DS. It was all I ever needed. Number six. Final Fantasy IV feels like a game where Square took all of their mistakes from their first three games, learned from it, and put it together for a truly special experience. It was also revolutionary. The introduction of the active time battle system took the slow turn-based battles and cranked up the urgency. It became a staple feature in the franchise for years. The character story arcs in this game were unlike any previous titles. When Cecil questions the king's motives during the prologue and later becomes separated from his friend Kane, it just feels like an epic story is about to unfold. Party members come and go, and there are many scenes where you think they're gone forever. I had a deep emotional connection to these characters, and no previous game in the series could evoke those same feelings. For myself, Final Fantasy IV was the first game in the series that felt like a Final Fantasy game. It introduced all the elements that I loved about Final Fantasy, a story that feels like a grand fantasy novel, a variety of unique characters, the detailed sprite work, and of course the incredible music from Nobu Umatsu. Theme of Love is still in my top Final Fantasy tracks, even after 27 years. Final Fantasy IV may not be the greatest game in the series, let alone the greatest RPG on the Super Nintendo, but it was an extremely important and impactful game for the franchise and the genre. Number five. 
One that's been on everyone's mind recently has been Final Fantasy XV, and with good reason. Despite the memes and horrors of this game being delayed time and time again, XV is a story about a colossal takeover of astronomical powers. It's hard to really break down, but it's one of those stories in which royal blood must reign to ensure the survival of mankind. And unlike most Final Fantasies when you've got a large cast to swap in and out, you only control four people. Prince Noctis, who very quickly must grow up into the king he is destined to be, Gladio, his bodyguard, Ignis, his longtime family friend, caretaker, and cook, and Prompto, his best childhood buddy. I love the story a ton, and you will start to really embrace the bromance you experience with these men who become family so quickly. And brotherhood and friendship in Japanese culture don't really resonate that much as it would with us here in the States, or internationally for that matter. So the weight of this plot is very important. But unfortunately, like 12 and 13, you could easily get lost in all the terminology of the people and beings and all that kind of crazy stuff. Final Fantasy XV's open world gameplay is vastly different than all of the other predecessors before it. Combat is kind of reminiscent of a hack and slash. Large, beautiful landscapes, riding chocobos, hunting monsters, driving a car with your favorite Final Fantasy tracks playing, hanging out with friends. And what's awesome is that you get to decide how long this game will be for you. In me completing the vanilla version of the game, I easily spent 150 hours plus. And that was back when there was only the vanilla content. If you're looking for an excellent, captivating story, awesome graphics, and tons of content, Final Fantasy XV is an excellent place to start, as it's a Final Fantasy that's reflective of the current era of the gaming space. Number four. You ever have a game that you start to play because you know it's awesome? It's got a fun cast of characters, digestible gameplay, tons of funny dialogue, and for whatever reason, you can't bring yourself to finish it? That's been my exact relationship with Final Fantasy IX. I acknowledge that, yes, it's one of my favorite Final Fantasies, but it's one that, for some dumbass reason of mine, I have never finished. I always get to the end of Disc 1, and I get hyped for Disc 2, but never end up getting past it. With the reception and backlash from Final Fantasy VIII, Nine kind of tried to go back to basics with a more of a medieval setting. And not so much focusing on traditional Final Fantasy tropes of classes and whatnot, but more about magic and the wonders of the sky. Airships becoming important again. Yet the biggest standout for me are the characters. Zidane is kick-ass with his fun tail. Vivi is the black mage we've all seen in the Final Fantasy franchise over the years, but with this scaredy cat character in the beginning. And Steiner has got to be one of the best characters of all time. Number three. When it came to the PlayStation 2, Final Fantasy X was an incredible experience. I go through something that I don't experience often with any other game. Every time I play it, I fall back in love with it. Graphically, it's gorgeous. From Xanarkin is one of the best music tracks of all time. The Sphere Grid is a brilliant battle system, allowing you to build each character any way you'd like, especially if you're playing the international versions. It features a crazy love story with a protagonist who starts off cocky and rude and ends up becoming a better changed person. The characters all grow to support each other. Yes, even Kamari Ronzo. And despite the twists and turns of the narrative, you feel your sense of purpose in the story getting bigger and bigger. Now, everyone loves to make fun of this game's protagonists, especially with that one scene. You know the one I'm talking about. I guess over the years, that seems weird to me because I felt like I always understood the relationship between Yuna and Titus, especially with the context of the scene. Two people struggling to put a smile on their faces in a time where people expect them to be a certain way, laughing on purpose at each other awkwardly through the ridiculousness, realizing that there's a certain fate that's standing in their way. But it doesn't matter, this scene is the butt of jokes for many, many people. Final Fantasy X solidified what I cherished most in an RPG. But I have to admit, my love and understanding of this game stems from numbers two, and especially into number one. Number two? Longtime fans of the show know of my love, admiration, and respect for Final Fantasy VII. I spent a lot of my college career writing a paper about how Final Fantasy VII changed the landscape of gaming for better or for worse via the themes of loss and identity. 
With the help of Alex Fossiani, we took this paper and within 18 months, turned it into a large video series here on the channel. Unfortunately, that series is no longer here on this channel and I'd like to say that, yes, those videos explained my entire love and passion for this game. I'm sure someone out there has uploaded them onto the internet, but you know what? I'm still gonna gush about Final Fantasy VII. What starts out as a train heist leads to a larger battle for Gaia, the planet of this universe. Cloud Strife, a former member of an elite task group known as Soldier, finds himself as a mercenary for hire in Midgar, a city that is powered by the life stream, the blood of the planet. He teams up with Avalanche, a resistant group, to take down the evil corporation known as Shinra, for they are corrupting the world more and more by draining the life stream. Not bad for a boxer description, huh? Unfortunately, with the top 10 as intense as this, I can't deep dive into the plot without spoiling it or getting something wrong. So, if you want to go hard, you can find my series somewhere online. And for those of you wondering, yes, I plan on redoing this whole thing in a brand new way. The Materia system was revolutionary at the time. It allowed players to swap in and out different rocks known as Materia. Materia lets its users cast all kinds of magic. The biggest and most notable stable introduced into Final Fantasy VII was Limit Breaks, moves that each of the characters use when they've reached a breaking point. These moves are so freaking rad, they've appeared in every Final Fantasy from then on, in some shape or another. The craziest thing about this game is how well it did. It was the first Final Fantasy that wasn't on a Nintendo console. It sold millions and millions of copies, and it features one of the most widely shocking and popular moments in all of gaming history. While it's loved by many, nowadays it seems cooler to shit on this game. At the end of the day, I feel like you should be allowed to say whatever you would like. And as much as I love Final Fantasy VII and the franchise around it, it takes second place on my list. Number one! I've always said that your first Final Fantasy becomes your favorite. And with me, what was my first Final Fantasy? The one that started it all? The one that hooked me from the beginning. Yes, it had some of the weirdest commercials out there, but they worked. I had no idea what lied in store for me. What I thought was going to be a Pokemon or a Monster Hunter type game based on its ads turned out to be one of the most compelling adventures I've ever been on. And more importantly, it made me fall in love with the JRPG genre. Final Fantasy VI is the best goddamn RPG of all time. I don't care what shade you want to throw at me, this game has everything. An empire set out to take over the world, a resistance rising up to fight back, and in between, the Esper race. Magical beings that at one point believed in the human race, but are now being hunted down and harnessed into decaying crystals that teach its beholder how to use magic based on that being's properties. The main character, Terra, is a naturally bred Esper slash human hybrid, who has been brainwashed her whole life by the Empire to do evil deeds. After an encounter with an Esper in the minds of Narsh, she is set on her own identity search, trying to make friends and figuring out where she lies in the ultimate battle of good versus evil. The music in this game may be the best goddamn original soundtrack I've ever heard. It's phenomenal. And all of the beautiful covers that people have done over the years for the music from this game just goes to show how intricate it was all designed. There's so many heart-wrenching, difficult, funny, sad, triumphant, weird, and memorable moments in this game. The opera scene is incredible! And for an SNES RPG, it's long as hell. Completionists, there's so much to enjoy in this game. I firmly believe that without Final Fantasy VI and its complexity of dealing with a band of large cast members, all with wants, desires, hardships, dreams, and goals, that Final Fantasy VII and the ones after it would have been horrible. Final Fantasy VI paved the way for the rest of the other Final Fantasies that came after it. And yes, you could argue, well, that's the default thing that happens for every Final Fantasy. That's not what I'm getting at. The success of Final Fantasy VI determined the success of Final Fantasy Fantasy 7, which determined the success of the next one based on what made 6 so wonderful. The things they got right in 7, and in 8, and in 9, and in 10 all stem from the grassroots and foundation that is Final Fantasy 6. Final Fantasy 6 slash American 3 is the most important Final Fantasy of all time. So, those are my crazy-ass top 10 Final Fantasy games. 
I know a lot of you are going to be mad. I know it's hard to hear. And I know a lot of you just want to bash the keyboard. Tell you what, don't do that. Instead, just tell me what yours are in the comments down below. I'll see you guys next time for another brand new episode of The Completionist. Take it easy. And uh, I'm going to go hug a stuffed animal for fear of reading your guys' comments. Thanks.